Okay, I'm just going to quickly run through the answers to this. It's uh, chapter 4, switching circuits, and we're looking at MOSFETs. This is exercise 4.3. What device is shown above? I hope you recognise it off with this chapter topic, which is a MOSFET. Three of these devices have names, well, okay, so they are the anemia, the gate, the drain, and the source. Okay, uh, label them. Gate, drain, source. Now, typically, if you're going to label them, you'd actually label them like D, S, and G. That's the normal way to do it, but it does say with their correct name. It's worthwhile noting that you often see components like integrated circuits and they might have things like VSS and VDD. don't know whether you've ever noticed that. Well, the VDD is the more positive side and the VSS is the more negative side. And um, Hopefully when you're familiar with using MOSFET you're understand that the drain is more positively biased than the source. Next question then. Uh, the output of the logic system is required to switch on a high power solenoid. Okay, so we're going to have a logic system, a MOSFET, switching the solenoid. Okay, it doesn't actually say we have to use a MOSFET, but MOSFETs are quite good for that because they have a small linear region and they therefore tend to be working either in cutoff when you cut the current off, so it's like an open switch, or saturation, which is when you have the full current going through. So let's add some, uh, let's add the uh, component and some connections as well. You've got to be able to draw this, so it's all very well known how to use a circuit wizard, but if you can't draw the component, you're stuffed in the exam, so make sure that you can draw it. You don't need to label the connections. I mean, you could do drain, source, and gate, but that's not necessary. It's a standard symbol. People understand uh, what the terminals are. Uh, do we need to do anything else? Uh, suitable switching device. Okay, we've done that. Connections, done that. Ah, right, okay, one other thing. I don't know whether they were expecting this, but you really need this. This thing is a diode, silicon diode, and I'm going to name it a free wheeling diode. That's very, very necessary. If you had, say, a lamp, which is a resistive load, it's effectively like just a resistor that gets hot, you don't need a free wheeling diode. But if you've got a solenoid or anything else that has a coil in it, you do need this diode. Let me try to briefly explain it at a level that hopefully you'll understand for GCSE. When the solenoid or the coil is powered up there is magnetic energy in there and when you then uh, when you then uh, uh, turn the signal low so from the logic system so the MOSFET is going to be entering cutoff so it's going to act as an open switch the energy which is stored in the coil can be used to raise the voltage to keep the current flowing and the problem with that is you can have an unexpectedly high voltage here which can damage both, both your MOSFET or other components as well so what you tend to do is to have this freewheeling diode here and then there will be a higher voltage here. Remember it's going to be raised to keep that current going. There will be a higher voltage here than the 12 volts, which seems surprising, but is true. And then so because of that, there's a potential difference so the current can flow in that direction. And then it can then dissipate as heat. Now, if you didn't have that freewheeling diode, you'd most likely damage your MOSFET. So it really is necessary. So do include one in a practical circuit. Um, oh, by the way, I should mention that the normal flow of current would be in that direction and it can't go this way because this diode is what we call reverse biased. It can't go that way. Uh, next question, signal produced by a sensing subsystem has a maximum output voltage of 6.7 volts. Determine the maximum load current that can be attained. Do this quite easily. I might even draw you a little circuit in a minute, but the drain current, because that's the load current, the drain current, remember this is the load here so it's just above the drain, the drain current is going to be equal to 
the mutual transconductance multiplied by the voltage GS, which is the signal. Okay, this this by the way, this V uh, GS. If we stuck a multimeter in there, they would be measuring the voltage between the gate and the source, because you know gate and source is there. I mean, you could just as well put a voltmeter there, but it's the same thing. Hopefully, you can see that. Uh, minus three. Okay, so now what do we got? Uh, the G sub M is 1.9. So 1.9 and then it's going to be multiplied by VGS. We've got 6.7, 6.7 minus 3. Okay, so then... So 1.9 times 3.7 gives us 7.03 7.03 amps that's the maximum current that we could have 